In this segment, we're going to talk about recurrent neural networks and why they might be a good idea for language modeling and classification and things like that. And as a bit of a spoiler, we're also then going to talk about sort of some of the thorns with them and why we're not going to focus on them as much and instead going to use a different architecture called transformers. So feed-forward neural networks, uh, as we've seen, they don't do a good job of handling variable length inputs. And there's some reasons that are purely practical, but a uh, sort of conceptual one is that uh, they assign each position in their feature vectors a fixed semantics. So suppose we take four words, the movie was great, and we concatenate those four uh, word embeddings into a single feature vector. Now, if we learn some parameters, there's going to be a certain set of parameters associated with position four in this vector that are going to learn to model the fourth word here. Then if I get a new sentence like, that was great, this great is kind of com in a completely different position in the vector than the other great. Uh, sort of technically, these are in orthogonal subspaces of the vector space, and so the model is not actually going to share any parameters related to these two usages of great. And that's not what we want. Instead, what we want to do is we want to kind of process all of these words somewhat uniformly, right? If we're doing something like sentiment analysis or even language modeling, knowing that the word great is in the context somewhere is kind of useful. And it would be nice to be able to do that without having to like observe it in every single position. But we still want to make the uh, function that we're using context dependent. We don't want to go as far as a deep averaging network in terms of just erasing all notions of position. So RNNs are a theoretical way to do this. So an RNN is defined in terms of a cell that takes an input x, which you can think about as a word, and this cell has a state, which we're going to call h. There's a previous state that's kind of coming in from the history of the RNN, and the RNN is going to do some computation and produce an output y and an updated version of the state h based on the input and the previous state. Um, now, sometimes you'll also see uh, other variables like C for cell state, which are used in architectures like the long short-term memory network. Um, so I'm going to just kind of optionally put that here in the graph. Okay, so. What's the sort of benefit of this? Well, we can instantiate this architecture over this sentence here. And it kind of consumes each of these words and then produces an output. And basically, if we want to know that this output is positive, which here we're going to denote by blue, then the model will see the word great at some point and it can kind of flip a bit in its representation and produce an output that's aware of the fact that the word great showed up here. And when I talk about this model also being able to use context, uh, we can feed in a sentence like this, and the word not here, the model can kind of recognize that, oh, OK, I'm going to change something in my context because I just saw not. Then when I see great, I know not to sort of go blue, that it's not positive, um, but I'm going to, uh, I'm kind of in a negative uh, sentiment sort of state still. So theoretically, if the model had seen great in two different positions, it would do the right thing, but it's also able to account for the fact that not is here. All right, so the issues with RNNs that I mentioned stem from a problem called the vanishing gradient problem. So I've listed here a formula for computing the updated uh, hidden state representation based on the input x and the previous hidden state h t minus 1. Um, and b is just a bias term. So we're not going to go through this formula in detail. But the really key thing here is that there's a tan h involved. And what that looks like is this. And what that means is that when you're trying to do backpropagation, if the input to the tan h is kind of very far out on either end of the spectrum, the tan h function is very flat. And so if you are doing backpropagation, and if your values for the tan h are kind of out towards these extreme ends of the spectrum, then the gradient is going to be kind of very diminished as you go back through the network. And this is going to be a problem for learning how to remember pieces of information over many time steps. 
There's another problem here, which is that if you just sort of ignore the tan H and you look at what's going on with the H's, we have HT equals tan H, ignoring that, of V times HT minus one. So over time, as you scroll through a sentence, you're repeatedly multiplying by this V matrix many times. So what that can do is that can either cause H to kind of blow up or shrink, depending on what the eigenvalues of V are. That's also going to cause problems. And so we have kind of multiple reasons why it's going to be hard to have gradients kind of give us information over long time scales of these networks. Now, this was uh, part of the uh, sort of observation that led to the development of architectures like long short term memory networks that do better at this. But they really don't still don't help enough. It's still hard to learn over, say, thousand word uh, kind of time scales of information for things like language modeling. And RNNs are also slow, and they're kind of slow in a bad way, which is they don't parallelize well. Uh, if you're going to encode a sequence, you have to fundamentally go through order n kind of steps that don't parallelize because you have to read each word in and update the hidden state accordingly. What we're going to see is that transformers solve both of these problems, they kind of index into the context very effectively, and they also parallelize very effectively. So we're not going to have these uh, kind of long sequential uh, chains in our computation graph that are going to cause things to be slow. So we're going to kind of put RNNs to bed here and turn our attention to transformers for the rest of this course. That's the end of the segment.